Hi. In today's video I'd like to talk about the signs that I made a couple of months ago, numbered 1 through 15. These signs are fairly simple things, they're just a wooden plank with this 3D printed number on the front. And on the top here we have this chain that attaches to these eyelets here. So these eyelets are screwed into the wood on the side. Um, and of course they are in the center here and they are 50 millimeters from the side. Now it is quite important that they are in the center of the wood because if they are too close to either of the edges then you run an increased risk that the wood splits apart as you screw them in. And the distance on this end and on that side should be the same otherwise it looks fairly ugly. Now you could of course diligently lay that out using either some calipers or you could use a ruler or something like that. But what I want to show you today is this jig that I made. This jig has a hole over here, a hole on the other side and these are used to guide the drill. And they have these edges on the back which allow you to index it to the size of the boards. So if I just go to the back of this board, you can just put your jig here and then you can drill right through those two holes. So what I'd like to show you now is that you can make one of these jigs very quickly and for a very low cost and it will dramatically increase the speed and accuracy of your work. Here we are in Fusion 360 to model this jig and I'll be moving fairly quickly here to show you that with a couple of shortcuts you can knock these out really fairly quickly. So create sketch on the bottom plane here Make this 18 and 300, that's the thickness and the length of the material. And then we're going to create construction lines across the middle here and across the middle there. Make a circle, I'm going to make it 3 millimeters plus a little bit just to uh, ensure that the drill will clear it. Make that 50 and then we're going to mirror this circle over this mirror line. Click OK, finish the sketch, E for extrude. Make that 5 millimeters to go. Create a new sketch on the new top surface, offset the outside by 5 millimeters, create a line like so, and another line here, and then we're also going to create two lines over here. I'm going to make these lines 50 millimeters apart, and I'm going to make this line 25, let's say, that's not super critical. So that's one edge to index the part from the corner of the material and the other part to just index it on that end. So click OK, join. We're nearly done. I'm going to create a pipe here. So I'm going to make this two millimeters and this is just to ensure that there is a raised edge or a burr on the edge of the material that that doesn't completely mess up the indexing of the jig. So I'm going to do that there. I'm also going to do that over here. Click OK. And that's the jig complete in hopefully under two minutes. I've now opened up this jig in Cura, and the first thing I'm going to do is spin it around because I want this bit here to lay flat on the bed, and I want these alignment pegs to point upward. So I'll rotate this 180 degrees. Now I have a fairly large printer, the uh, 400 millimeter version of the CR10, uh, and in this case the jig just fits on the bed quite easily. Um, I'm also using a 0.6mm nozzle with 0.7mm line widths and 0.25mm uh, layer heights. And in this case, this jig only takes about an hour and a half to print. It takes uh, just under 30 grams as well. Um, there's otherwise nothing too much special about it. But now if we go to a different printer, the CR20, um, which has the same size bed as an Ender 3, then of course in kind of naive way this doesn't fit because the jig is uh, over 300 millimeters wide and the bed is only 235. So I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees so that it's now diagonally on the bed and in this case it just about fits. Now I've got a relatively uh, strong profile as I call it here. Um, so there's quite a lot of material, quite a lot of bottom and top thickness, uh, quite a lot of wall lines as well. Um, so this now takes uh, three and a half hours to print. So that's a little bit on the long side of things. Now, um, in some cases you do want to have a bit of material around the holes. So you want a little bit of wall thickness uh, just to ensure that you don't completely uh, wear out the holes in one go. Um, 
but what you can still do is go to the top and bottom thickness and at least reduce that because that really doesn't serve much of a purpose. Um, so that already cuts down on the print time and the material quite significantly. And if you do choose to make a jig that you're only going to use a couple of times or that you don't particularly care about the accuracy that much, you can reduce the wall line count as well and that will reduce the time a little bit even more. Nevertheless, um, this is still a relatively long print, you could say, but do keep in mind that this is about three hours worth of work that the printer is doing, not work that you are doing. So to you, it still only costs about 10 minutes to make this. It's also still just under 30 grams, uh, so that's about 1 30th of a kilogram. So it's material wise, this is under a euro if you're doing it in PLA as I'm doing. The reason that we're 3D printing these jigs is because we want to have this upright section so that we can index the jigs against the side of the material like this. If you don't need this particular feature, it is also possible to laser cut these jigs, which should be significantly faster than printing them. These two holes are of course according to the requirements I had for this particular sign, and that is something that you'll have to adapt to your own requirements. So for example, here I have a hexagonal hole pattern, and this is a pattern that's already quite difficult to lay out manually, and yet at the same time in Fusion 360, it's as simple as clicking circumscribed polygon inside of the sketch menu. As for durability, if you're drilling into wood, you can expect these jigs to last about a dozen, maybe two dozen holes. But if you're drilling into metals, you can really only expect them to last once. The problem is that as the drill goes into the material, it starts bringing the shavings of the material upward through this hole. And in the case of wood, that's not a huge issue because wood is about as hard as this plastic, so that doesn't eat away too rapidly. But if the shavings that are coming up are steel, then it will rapidly eat away at this plastic. And that is a problem that we've seen before with the shaft hole drilling jig. And like with that jig, the solution to that is to insert these drill bushings. Now these drill bushings are made out of hardened steel, so any uh, steel shavings coming up don't eat away at this bushing particularly quickly. The downside to this is that these drill bushings cost about two to three to four euros per piece. And so for a jig like this, you're already looking at about 15 euros worth of drill bushings. So you only really want to do that if uh, such a jig is particularly dear to you. The last thing I want to point out is that what I've been showing you so far is jigs that you can drill through, but you can also simply use a pencil to mark through a jig like this. Now for holes like this, that doesn't really make that much sense. But what you can do, for example, is uh, cut out a square in the sketch and then using the pencil, you can mark out the square on the correct location on the material, and then you can use a jigsaw to finally cut it out. So I hope you found that useful, and I hope to see you on the next time.